reminds us of generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Shine. 
Rob and Rachel for all of the music helping us warm up our voices, warm up our clapping. We saw who was clapping uh, and warm up our souls as we come into Shabbat with more music. Make sure that you're singing along to get that true feeling of Shabbat and we enter into our worship now with our call to worship.
This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it, we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravin. Together we read, Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah and mitzvot, laws and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Day and night we will reflect on them, for they are our life, and doing them lengthens our days. Never remove your love from us. Praise to you, Adonai, who loves your people Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem, Kevod Bachuto, Leolam Vaed. We may be seated if we have stood. And we join together in the words of Vehafta on pages 10 and 11 of our Sidur. Vehafta et Adonai Elohecha. Bechol levavcha, ubechol nafshecha, ubechol meodecha. Vahayu hadvarim ha'ele, asher anochi mitzavcha hayom al levavcha. Vishinan tam levanecha, vidibar tabam, vishivtecha bavetecha, uvlechtecha vaderech, ushochbecha uvkumecha. Ukshartam laot al yadecha, vahayu letotafot bein enecha. Uchtavtam al mezuzot betecha uvi sharecha. Lamaan tis keruva asitem et kol mitzvotai, vitem kiroshim lelohechem, ani adonai elohechem, asher hotseti echem me eretz vitraim, liot lachem lelohim, ani adonai elohechem. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together. All right.
think the real question is, where's the Israelites marched across the sea? Did they clap on one and three or on two and four? We may never know, but we'll have to explore that a little further, perhaps. We turn from our prayer of redemption to the additional prayer the rabbis added to our evening service, a prayer for safety and security, for God's sheltering presence of peace as we join in Hashki Vein. of Shabbat is the minucha and the rest and peacefulness we felt at the beginning. Another mode is oneg and joy and great energy, a real sense of feeling and connection to Shabbat. And so it's with that that we turn to the words of Yismachu, that those who celebrate Shabbat will rejoice in it.
we rise in body or in spirit, we elevate ourselves as we enter into the tefillah together. Join together on pages 16 through 19 in our Sidor. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Velohe Avotenu Vimotenu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Velohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol Hagibor Vahanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim Vekone Hako. Vizocher chaste avot vi imahot, who may vi gula leave nave and a hem la maan shemaho be ahava. Mela chozer u moshia u magain, Baruch ata ranai, magain Abraham ve ezrat sara. Atagi borle olam aranai, mechaye hako ata rav la hoshia, mechakel chayim bechesed, mechaye hako barachamim rabim. So mech noflim verofe cholim umatir asurim mekayem emunato lishene afar mi chamocha baal givurot umi domelach melech memit du mechaye umatzmiach yeshua ne amanata la hachayot hako baruch ata adonai mechaye hako. God gave us Shabbat as a special holy day. When we celebrate Shabbat, we make our lives holy. We read together. We make our lives holy when we rest. We make our lives holy when we pray. We make our lives holy when we study Torah. We make our lives holy when we share the joy of Shabbat. Thank you, God, for this holy day. Thank you, God, for Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Continue with a prayer for peace, our blessing of Shalom Rav.
Joy. The third of our themes for Shabbat is Kiddusha, sanctity, specialness, holiness. And so I invite you each in your own square, in your own house, in your own space, to take that moment for yourself to connect with something of that sanctity that we find on this Shabbat. We pause for a moment of silent prayer.
join together in a prayer for the well-being of the state of Israel. O Heavenly One, protector and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love. Spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. And let us say, Amen. And as well, we join in a prayer for the well-being of our country. Together, O guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. Teach us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation and alert to the care of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they govern with justice and compassion. Help us all to appreciate one another and to respect the many ways we may serve you. May our homes be safe from affliction and strife and our country be sound in body and spirit. And let us say, Amen. We turn as well on this moment of communal prayer to thinking of those of our family and friends who on this Shabbat are in need of God's blessing of healing. For them, we ask for God's gift through Tfilat Mishaberach L'Cholim. From our Temple family, we think of Allison Clark, Jeannie and Jack Hellitzer, Ruth Cohn, Amnon Solomon, Ron Schmal, Terry Wolin, Shaul ben Moshe Verivka, Zev ben Yeshaya, Shimon Yaakov ben Saralea, the Yedidia Enoch HaKohen, and Zusya ben Ish Tzadik Veishat Staka. If there are others whom you would add to this list for healing, I invite you to hold them in your hearts or speak them aloud in your homes. Together we ask for God's blessing upon them all, the gift of healing with the words of Tfilat Mishaberach Lecholi. If you are a religious school student and you want us to make sure that we know that you attended this service tonight, all you have to do is send an email to school at tbs-online.com with the word of our week, which is story. 
Now, I have to say that uh, I like to tell stories. And fortunately, as a rabbi, I get plenty of opportunity to teach or sermon or just tell stories. Although apparently I have been known to tell the same ones over and over again. I don't know if that happens to any of you, but sometimes uh, that happens to me. Uh, I've been faculty for many, many summers at the Reform Movement Summer Camp in the Berkshires at Eisner Camp. Uh, and for many of those summers when I was there, in the evening services of the unit that I was assigned to during the course of tefillah, I would tell a story of one kind or another. Well, one night, one year after one of my stories, a counselor came up to me. It turns out I'd been there long enough, and he'd been there long enough, that he had been a kid, had been a camper, and now was old enough to be a counselor. And he said, Rabbi, I first heard that story from you when I was a camper, and now I'm so glad that my campers get to hear it from you too. I, I, he meant it as a compliment, and I took it that way, but it also meant that I was old, and I realized that too. Turns out I'm not the only person in a position of leadership in the Jewish community who tells stories and sometimes tells the same stories again and again. Our Torah portion this week is the very start of the book of Deuteronomy, Parshat Devarim. After 40 years of wandering, the Israelites finally have come to the very border of the land of Israel. The whole generation before them had, had died off, but before they actually cross over to get into the land, Moses is going to talk to them for the whole book of Deuteronomy. Moses repeats for them their history. Moses reminds them of their commandments and laws. And Moses starts by retelling some of their stories. Moses starts by retelling the story of the scouts who 40 years before had been on the very border with the land of Israel. They had gone in and scouted the land and brought back reports of, of the goodness of the land and of the giant people who were there, who they were worried would, would wallop them when they came in. The Israelites, as you might remember, at that moment suffered from a, a great lack of faith. They were led astray, and so they didn't trust in, in God's help. And so they were condemned to wander for 40 years. That's how the story reads uh, in the book of Numbers when it actually happened. But here, 40 years later, on the border of the Promised Land, Moses retells the story to the Israelites, and there are some changes in the story as he tells it. It's not God who commands Moses to sell the scouts in Moses' retelling. It's the Israelites who come to Moses and ask to go and scout it. It's not the chieftains of the tribe who are explicitly named and sent, but it's just 12 guys, one from each tribe, with, with no honorifics or no names attached. And it's not the scouts' mixed reporting that's troublesome, but it is the people murmuring in their disbelief that Moses says was the real cause of the trouble. So we might ask, why would Moses change the story? Now, it is worthwhile to note, it may not matter much why Moses changed the story. Sometimes when we retell stories, details may get changed slightly. The exactness of the story may not always matter. Right? Have you ever said, I think this happened in 1988, or maybe it was 1987, maybe it was 1986, it doesn't really matter. right? Sometimes we change the details just a little and it doesn't make much of a difference. Actually, if you are a fan of the musical Hamilton, anyone a fan of the musical Hamilton? You know, if you're also a student of history, you may know that there are some discrepancies between the two. For example, Hamilton and Burr had their duel not because of the election of 1800 for president, but actually the cause of it was their dispute over the election uh, for the governor of New York in 1804. It doesn't change the outcome of the duel. Actually, it didn't even change the drama of the show, just a slight change in the detail of telling the story. Sometimes the change may not matter. But let's suppose for argument's sake that changing the story does matter. Why would Moses do this in repeating the story to the Israelites? Now, to understand this, I think let's take a quick, quick exploration of, of three reasons why we tell stories to entertain, to impart information, and to teach a lesson. There are other reasons why we may tell stories, but I think these will be enough for now. If you really want to know more, stay tuned. They might be coming to a high holiday sermon in a sanctuary or Zoom box near you someday.
Anyway, why do we tell stories? First, we tell stories in order to entertain, to share a funny anecdote, to tell an amusing tale. I mentioned I'd been at Jewish summer camps for many, many, many years. Back in the summer of 1989, I was a counselor at Goldman Union Camp Institute in Zionsville, Indiana. And there was a tradition among the counselors of waking up your campers at midnight to give them food, to feed them something usually contraband that they couldn't otherwise get just as a special treat. Well, one evening, my counselor friends in the cabin next door to where I was woke up their fourth grade boys to give them Dunkin' Donut holes, little munchkins. And one sleepy 10-year-old rubbed his eyes and said, wait, if we're having breakfast, why is it so dark outside? And his quick thinking counselor said, ah, oh, it's because of the total eclipse of the sun. And the 10th grader said, 10 year old said, great. And they ate their donuts and they went right back to sleep. And the next morning at roll call, much to the bemusement of the entire rest of camp, their cabin announcement was that if anyone had pictures of last, of uh, this morning's total eclipse of the sun, would they please send them over to cabin 12? By the way, just so that you know, one of the counselors in that story is now the senior rabbi of a very large congregation in Texas. Uh, and the other is a powerful member of the New York City Council representing Bo Brooklyn. So you never know what you might grow up to be. We tell stories to entertain. We tell stories as well to convey information. Uh, in 2002, maybe it was 2003, uh, there was a book published by the historian and diplomat Michael Oren. Uh, which uh, was called Six Days of War, a very detailed accounting of the Six Day War of 1967. It was meticulously researched. It was very detailed in everything that led up to the war, the war itself and its aftermath. It, in many ways, reshaped how the war has been viewed and reshaped the story, the way the story of the war has been told. And I knew the general outline, the history, of course, but I learned so much more from, from the story in the book. And I think the same is true for many biographies or works of nonfiction. They tell the story of a person or an event in order to convey information about it. The third reason why we tell stories is to teach a lesson. In fact, we even have a name for stories that explicitly teach a lesson. They are called fables, right? A fable is a story that has a lesson in it. It always ends, what's the last line of any fable? The moral of the story is dot, dot, dot. Sometimes actually when I work with our bar and bat mitzvah students to understand their Torah portions, to find the lessons, the meaning in their portions in these ancient words for what they mean in their lives today, I do an exercise with them about fables. We tell fables to one another, we try and find the lesson in it, and then look into the Torah portion to find their moral. So tortoise in the hare, right? What's the fable of that? If we were interactive, you'd tell me. It was to slow and steady, wins the race, exactly, right? Or uh, the fable of the boy who cried wolf, uh, right? Not to lie, that you can't believe a liar even when he's telling the truth, or any of the fables that you know, right? We use stories, we tell stories to, to illustrate moral messages, to illuminate our values or our ideals. And I think this may be our answer to why Moses retold the story of the spies in the first place. He told it, I think, to teach the Israelites sitting there a lesson. Here they are on the border of the promised land, just like the generation that had come before them. Their parents' generation, which had died off in the wilderness, they're now standing there. Their parents before them had not had enough faith in God in order to cross over to go into the land. They didn't believe the good reports of the scouts. They didn't believe that God would be with them. So perhaps in retelling the story, Moses changes it a bit to reemphasize some parts and to leave out other parts in order to, to drive home that message, to teach that lesson of belief, of faith, of, of trust in God, of not making the same mistake in the same place that their ancestors, that the generation before them had done. Not to get a little ahead of ourselves towards the high holidays, but our great teacher Maimonides tells us that the true definition of teshuva, of repentance, that the way that you know you have truly done teshuva is when you find yourself in the same situation, and instead of making this choice that led you the wrong way, you make the right choice instead. 
that may be what uh, Moses is helping the Israelites do, making the right choice by sharing with them the story that teaches them a lesson. Fundamentally, I think we all tell stories in order to grow by sharing entertaining experiences with each other, by imparting information to one another, by teaching lessons from one generation to the next. Whether they are stories from our history, from our families, from our fables, we pray that we may always continue to share our stories together. King Yehiratzon, may this be God's will, and together let us all say, Amen. Now, speaking of stories, there are people in our community, hopefully folks who are here tonight, who are, during this month, writing a new chapter in their story, because during the month of July, they celebrate a birthday. If it is your birthday in the month of July, would you please type in the chat so that we might know you are here and that we can celebrate your birthday together? If you'd like, you are also welcome to not only put your name, but which birthday you are celebrating. And if you don't want to, or you want to say, well, it might be 29, it might be 30, you can tell that story as well. Anybody here whose birthday comes in the month of July? Jerry Paulson, Mark Goldman, Stephanie Lung, Scott Wurtzman, Richard and Stephanie both, Jennifer Goldman. That's right, Rabbi Perlin, who's with us tonight, her birthday. Michael Price, David Bear, Shana Charrington, Rebecca, I think today is your birthday itself, is that right? Sue Cohn, Lynn Sprung. So for all of you who we've named here, all of you who have birthdays in the month of July, draw a little closer. Come a little closer to your camera if you can. Come up on the virtual bema, so to speak, as it were, that we might offer this blessing for you. For Shana Greenberg and Judy Braun and Ann Miller as well. Eloheinu v'elohea v'artenu v'imotenu, our God and God of our ancestors, these happy children have come into your presence in the midst of this sacred congregation to give thanks for the blessing of another year of life. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with them always, that you will help open their eyes to see the wonder of the world around them, that you will help open their ears to hearing the needs of others, that you will help open their hearts to loving and to being loved that you will open their hands to do your good work in this world. We pray, O oh God, that the next year be another great chapter in the story of their lives filled with friendship and family, with health and with happiness and with all of your blessings. And together we all say, Amen. Yom Huledet Sameach, Yom Huledet Sameach, Yom Huledet Sameach, Yom Huledet Sameach, Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday to you, Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday, Happy Birthday to you. Now I know as well we have some who are writing another chapter in their joint story of life who celebrated anniversary on this month that will mark on this Shabbat. So we have the Perlins who can celebrate uh, or are celebrating with us 44 years on the 4th of July. Uh, that's a good lucky number of four there. Are there others who are with us celebrating an anniversary? 32 years for Gwen and Jerry, Cindy and Bill for 41 years coming up, 48 years for Leslie, Claire, Sharon and Mark, 22 years, Mark and Sarah, 32 years, Marcy and Jack, 18, Sally uh, for the Bermans for 40 years. Oh, that, that's a lot of married life all together. What a wonderful blessing for, for all of us to have you all uh, as role models. You come closer now, draw a little nearer on our, our virtual Bima. 
We are taught by our sages, Ish ve'isha zechu shechina b'nehem. When the married couple is worthy, that the very divine presence rests with them. O God, eternal source of blessing, we turn to you in gratitude for the strength and devotion that have preserved and sustained all of our friends as they mark this happy moment. Amidst the family and loved ones, O God, you look upon all of the years that they have spent together. We pray that they are full of a variety of experiences, both troubling and joyful, that they have weathered the sorrows and difficult times and found their life sweetened by being together in the happier moments. We pray, O oh God, that as you have been with them for these many years, you will continue to be with them for many, many more, blessing them always with kindness and goodness and most especially with love. We thank you for all of the benefits that you have bestowed upon them. We ask your blessing upon them with these words of gratitude for having reached this moment as we join in Shehechianu together. <laughs> blessing to celebrate wonderful moments together as a community. May we all be blessed with many more in the days and weeks and months to come. Friends, we turn back to our worship now in your Siddur. You can turn to page 23. I invite you to elevate body or spirit as we join in words of Alenu together. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet g'dula l'yotze b'reshit Sh'alo asanu k'goye haratzot V'lo samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama Sh'alo sam chalkenu k'ahem V'gor aleinu k'chol ha'amonam Va'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim L'fne melech mache ha'amlachim ha'kadosh baruchu V'ne'emar v'chaya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu Bayom ha'hu yeh Adonai echad Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo echad Our thoughts turn now to those who have departed this earth our own loved ones, those whom friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, the heroes of our country, those of every race and every nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. We remember them as we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. If a loved one's name is mentioned, I invite you, if you wish, to rise in your place and then we as one community will rise in body or spirit to join you in their memory. During this first year of mourning, we remember fondly our beloved member, member Arnie Heyman. We mourn as well during these last 30 days for those lost to our community. Irma Melsop, grandmother of BJ Melsop. Faye Offit, sister of Mike Mason. Herbert Holtzman, uncle of Cy Holtzman. Elsa Abramson, aunt of Stephanie Lung, and great aunt of Samantha, Nicole, and Timothy. 
Arlene Doty, mother of Jay Coplin and grandmother of Lucas and Noah. Shirley Perlman, grandmother of Marcy Streitman. Mary Ann Dreyfus, friend of the Perlin family. And Jory Reyes, friend of Sandy Adams. As we mark the yard site, the anniversary of the passing, the first year of Betty Littman, mother of Richard Littman, and Linda Reed, as well as the very first yard site of our member, Aldra Surratt. We recall as well the passing at this season of the year and years past of Shirley Mark, Shirley Zeitman, Anita Z. Feynman, Lillian Sonnenblum, Robert Friedman, Jack Green, Philip Kossoff Gilbert, Mar Mary Goldberg, Cordy Bishop, Ted Hoffman, Ray Detman, Mary Louise Mason, George Lieberman, Lieutenant Colonel Seymour Letterer, Tom Thurston, Beverly Krizanovic, Louis Davis, Sam Rocklin, Jeffrey Smith, Harry Klein, Shirley Rosen, Rose Strassfield, Raymond Stewart, Alpha Olson, and Marjorie Boyd. If there are names you would wish to add to our Kaddish list, people you are remembering, I invite you to hold them in your hearts, to mention them out loud. And as well, we bring into our hearts all those in our world who continue to die because of senseless violence and senseless hatred. We take them into our hearts with our own. We rise as one community in body or spirit to give praise to God for the blessing of all of their lives and the blessing of all of their memories with words of Kaddish, which can be found in our Siddur. Yikadal v'yikadash shamei rabah. Beama divra hirute, beam lich malhute, Bahaihon of Yomechon, of Haye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Bagala of Isman Kari Vimru, Amen. He shme Rabba Mivarach, Leolam Ulome Almaya, Vit Barach, Vish Tabach, Vit Paar, Vit Ramam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shame de Kudisha, Brihu. La Ela min kol birchata vishirata, tush birchata venechamata, tamiran bielma vimru, amen. He shlama rabba min shamaya, the chaim alenu ve al kol yisrael vimru, amen. Se shalom bimromav, huya ase shalom. Alenu ve al kol yisrael ve al kol yoshvete vel, vimru, amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among our people Israel, among all the world, as together we say, Amen. Ve'imru, 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 amen. Ve'imru, ve'imru, ve'imru. Amen. A few announcements from uh, our president. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to our Shabbat service. We're so glad everyone could join us tonight. Thank you, Rabbi Witzer, for leading us in worship tonight and for sharing your perspective with us in this week's TBS email about prayer. Thank you, Rob and Rachel, for sharing your gifts of music with us. And thank you, Brad Stein, who started this evening with musical meditations. The melodies were uplifting and a perfect start to my Shabbat worship this evening. It's so wonderful to be able to keep our TBS traditions alive, even during this time of physical isolation. And Shabbat Shalom, Gary and Rabbi Perlin, we're so glad you're with us. Happy birthday and anniversary to all our celebrants tonight. There was a lot of them. That's great. Please check the weekly email for all the great things continuing to happen within the TBS community. To highlight just a few, for the men of TBS Over 21, on Thursday, July 30th at 7.30 p.m., the Brotherhood presents Bros and Brews. Kick back at home with an adult beverage from the casual pint and hear a brew guru discuss the ins and outs of craft brewing. Contact Mark Goldman at brotherhood at tbsonline.org to reserve your spot 
and purchase the product at a special TBS Brotherhood discount. The best part, when you are done, there's no driving. Sisterhood is also having some great uh, virtual activities. Please check them out in the weekly email. Have you been to Minion Makers? Our traditional start time of 8.15 a.m. on a Saturday too early? I have good news. While we're on Zoom, Minion Makers is starting at Saturdays at 7, excuse me, at 9.15 a.m., not 8.15 a.m. for schmoozing, and the service starts at 9.30. Rabbi Windsor leads us in Torah studies tomorrow. I hope to see you there. Please take the 15 to 20 minutes and complete the Jewish Survey COVID-19 Impact Study for Greater Washington by Brandeis and sponsored by the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington. If you've not signed up yet, please do so for a meet and greet with Rabbi Witzer. There's still slots open in July and August. And if none of those scheduled times work for you, please let me or Lynn Sprung know and we'll see what we can do about offering other times. We will continue to add sessions as long as members are signing up. Wishing you a peaceful Shabbat and a great next week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And, uh, yeah. challenge of uh, Ooh, is there an echo of a thorough announcement from our person? He told all the thank yous I was going to say. Uh, but uh, our appreciation, as always, uh, to our technical team, to Dennis, to Lynn, to Lee, uh, to Rachel and Rob for, for music. Uh, and I'll echo uh, how beautiful it was to begin Shabbat, Brad, uh, with your lovely melodies. Thank you so much for that. Um, the only other thing that I'll add uh, is you may have seen in the weekly email uh, an invitation. Uh, over the coming months, we're going to do a couple of different things with our, our worship as we continue to explore what it might mean to pray together. Um, and so as sometimes happens at Minion Makers or in our Shiva Minions or in other opportunities, if you might like to help lead a prayer, read an English reading, lead via Hafta or Avot Bimahot or kiddish or candles anything like that uh, send me a quick email just let me know we will start putting those in uh over the course of the next handful of weeks actually uh this is something i've done in previous congregations just to add additional voices and i got a lovely note from from you from rabbi perlin uh mentioning that uh, just as i used to hand out cards to my congregation to do that and i found those when i was moving from one office to another uh, Rabbi Perlin found those as well from uh, back in the day there, which I think just may mean that your rabbis like to keep things in files. Uh, uh, but more importantly, that we love to be joined in our worship by many of you. So if you'd like that opportunity, please reach out and, and let us know. Um, with all of that, with the Kedusha, our sanctity, with the Menucha, our rest and relaxation, with great oneg and joy, uh, we enter into this blessed day of Shabbat and we enter into it with the hope that it will be a, a day of peace, that peace will come. We'll conclude with our singing of Avod Yavo, uh, a prayer for peace. Shalom 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 Aleinu, give us Shalom Aleinu, Ve'achova. Salam Aleinu, Ve'achova. Salam, Salam, Salam Aleinu, Ve'achova. Shalom Aleinu, O Yivosh Shalom Aleinu, O Yivosh Shalom Aleinu, Ve'yavuva. O Yivosh Shalom Aleinu, O Yivosh Shalom Aleinu, O Yivosh Shalom Aleinu, Ve'yavuva. And now, if you will, reach out to those with whom you might be sitting and then stretch out or up or down or across to connect one box to the next as one community we link ourselves one to another in this virtual space we have created may god bless you may god watch over you 
May God's light shine on you. May God be gracious to you. May God smile on you in everything your life has in store, in every chapter of your story yet to be written and yet to be told. May it happen in a world 